Alright, hello and welcome to another Starbase Summary. This will be covering June 7th to June 10th, 2025. You can see uh, a crane moving around the launch site there at Pad 2, and a tank getting lifted into place, looks like, at the Deluge Farm. Good stuff. Ever closer to Pad 2, coming online. Here's a possible BQD part delivered. <laughs> nice uh, frame-by-frame -frame <laughs> slow-mo there. Interesting. We'll have to see where that ends up, or if we see that again. Here's Booster 16 rolling back to the production site. If you didn't watch the last summary video, there's some excellent static fire footage in that one, so be sure to check it out. But of course, uh, the static fire looked good, so Booster 16 headed back to the production site, where it'll get its hot stage ring ahead of launch. You know, this is, like... It's it's really one of the only ways to get a sense of scale of these things, truly. I, I always say this, so forgive me if you've heard me say this before, but if you ever get to see a rollout of a booster or a ship, it really is like nothing else in terms of giving you a sense of scale. Being able to see human beings in close proximity to it, cars in close proximity to it, and being in close proximity to it. I mean, even being on the beach with a full stack, it's huge, don't get me wrong. Maybe out in the flats, um, but yeah, nothing quite like a rollout. Uh, look, the grid fin's turning, and it's moving inside the bay there. Good stuff. So we'll keep an eye out to see if it gets its hot stage ring, and of course, when it rolls out for launch. Scaffolding installed on the launch mount. That's pretty standard stuff. Booster 18.1 test tank is not standard stuff, though. It is a crazy new design, and it looks like they were installing some kind of valve assembly on the top of it. They've also uh, installed all of the actuators. Previously, with all the testing that we've seen them doing, it looked like those wonky diagonal actuators were not yet installed. They were kind of just uh, hanging out there. So now it looks like they're getting a new valve assembly on top, and the hydraulic actuators there, you can see it, uh, have been installed. So now we expect that they'll do some more testing with 18.1 and do some pushing and pulling on that header tank assembly that's inside that test article. Here we have some pile driving. I believe these are sheet piles for the Giga Bay. It's really fun when you're at the launch site and they're doing this. Sorry, at the production site and they're doing this uh, because the whole ground vibrates. <laughs> it it kind of shakes your whole body. Uh, I hope these guys' uh, hearing protection is sufficient. Yeah, we can just see it gets pushed into the ground. Bunch of guys standing around. Yep, it's going into the ground. You reckon it's going into the ground? Yeah, I reckon it's going into the ground. <laughs> In all seriousness, it's a pretty cool machine. And uh, they're going to need a lot of these sheet piles so that they can get the foundation in for the Giga Bay. Huh, are they pulling that one up? Maybe it wasn't in the exact right place. One of these days I'd really like to learn crane hand signals. If you know what crane hand signals are, please, in the comments, put a description of what... Like, what is the spinny thing? Is that up? Uh, yeah, I, I have questions. I know I could just Google it. I'll probably Google it after... <laughs> I probably will Google it after I'm done with this. Looks like they're checking a level. That's really cool. Measure twice. Cut once. Or stuff once. Or pile drive <laughs> once. I guess that's the vibratory hammer head thing, the pile driver. Neat. It's just wild. It, it just makes this pile go into the ground. It makes it look like a knife through butter. It makes it look easy. But, uh, of course, very large and complicated machine here. Making it work. Wow, did it rebound a little bit? That was cool. More debris clearing out and excavating at the site of the former Stargate building and High Bay. Lot of debris still to clear out, and as they clear out the debris, they are bringing in uh, more of those sheet piles, and it's just a process. They clean an area, they sheet pile it, they start excavating, they move on to the next area. It's just a constant flow at the production site as they get ready to build up the old Gigabay. You know, I, I know the ships kind of look wonky when uh, they don't have their tiles in and they're kind of like patchy still. I kind of like it, though. Like, I kind of think it looks cool. And I really do appreciate that we get to see them in an unfinished state like this, because 
I mean, imagine seeing a new Glenn in an, in an unfinished state like that. Uh, I guess we kind of did when it had, like, the unpainted... Anyway, I digress. Looks like a new structure. Uh, I didn't see what the label was because I was rambling. And some activity happening inside of the Star Factory. What are they cleaning the windows? Interesting. Huh. We've got a header tank. This is a hard shot to get. Props to Caesar. Header tank hanging out in the Star Factory, sort of in the nose cone hall area. And a booster barrel section. You can see it's sort of corrugated with that classic booster look. Good stuff. Nose cone without tile pins. I think in Star Factory right now, I could be wrong. I'm, I've been sick for a couple days. I'm way out of touch. Because things move so fast here in Boca. But I think in the Star Factory... Whoa! It's 39, 40, 41, and 42 in terms of nose cones. Caesar! That is a really cool shot that he was able to get. It's not often you get to see them actually moving the nose cones around. And that one is a spiky one, as they've clearly been installing the pins for the TPS tiles on it. You can see the little fixtures up at the top of the nose cone that they used to lift it while they're building it. And there's the pin welding robot. Nice. Good stuff. Yeah, and here's like the newest nose cone kind of in the bay, right where the Star Factory meets the office building. You can just barely see the tip of it from like a two foot radius <laughs> if you're standing in the exact right spot. Another really challenging shot to get, so props to Caesar. But uh, yeah, another nose cone coming up. This is obviously much earlier in the production process. Now this one is a little bit further along, which you can tell by the way it is. Ah, good old Orbital Pad 2. I'm still not used to that. Looking good, though. SpaceX is just absolutely tearing it up and building as fast as they can. You can just see constant welding, constant crane work, just crews going at it 24-7, trying to get this mount up and operational as soon as possible. Oh, that's cool. Look at the smoke. The light in the smoke. You'll love to see it. Got some guys hanging out on top of the mount, looks like. Some welders? Are those welding masks? Oh, oh, can't tell. I think they are. Someone in the comments is going to be like, Those aren't welding masks. They're just safety masks. I'm sorry. We record these in one shot. <laughs> you can see some of the guts there of the gantry. That's a really interesting shot. You can see the draw works really, really well. Good stuff. This is where the cable and winch system for the tower uh, and the chopstick arms is all housed. Are they moving scaffolding? Interesting. Here you can see the uh, sheet piles going in while a flurry of dump trucks and excavators move around the production site like animals on the Serengeti. There you can see ship 38 in Mega Bay 2 with ship 37 just barely peeking out on the left. A lot of work to go on the heat shields here, but progress is clearly being made and hopefully SpaceX will get a ship to entry interface with proper attitude control so they can get precious, precious data. It's like a scrap ring move to the scrapyard. Sometimes I wonder, like, did they mess up? Or were they calibrating a new machine? Or a new station and it's just like a dev ring? I, it's the, like little things that I would love to know the answers to. This is an interesting shot too because you can kind of see the sight lines that have been opened up since uh, the demolishing of the, star, of, star, of the Stargate building and uh, the high bay. You can see that HLS nose cone test article thing really well from uh, the production site main gate. Or at least what used to be the production site main gate. You can see the uh, water manifold there on the launch mount. Good stuff. I'm so excited to see uh, launch mount 2 active. It's going to be a completely different ballgame than uh, mount 1. Mount A? 
<laughs> Are those all wires? That's wild. This can't this couldn't be extension cords, right? I wonder what that was. Some concrete forms going up as they get sheet piles in. Oh wait, no, this is gonna be the launch site. Okay, this is by the uh main gate at the launch site sort of across from the orbital tank farm. They've been doing a lot of groundwork there ever since they rolled out the OLM for pad B. Oh my god, for pad 2. And yeah, it looks like they're just going to be reinforcing the the foundation there or maybe maybe they'll even put in a structure, hard to say. Tank farm looking good. Tank farm deliveries looking good. Whole bunch of oxygen coming in via truck. There was some news this week about a uh, company that's going to be uh, building an air separation unit in Brownsville in support of SpaceX and supplying Starbase. I think uh, right now a lot of the commodities get trucked in from Houston, so being able to shorten that drive significantly by trucking all that stuff in from Brownsville instead would be good, clearly. Just better all around. This guy, they've been doing a lot of work around the wall, sort of trenching out the area in front of it. I don't know if they're going to build the wall further out and then demolish the old one. They've done that several times over the years, sort of gotten a little bit closer to the road, a little bit closer to the road. Um, so yeah, it could also be just water control. A lot of times when it rains a lot, there's a lot of flooding in these areas around the launch site, so they could be trenching all this out to just put in some better drainage. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, but a lot of work going on next to the wall, essentially at the entire launch site, up and down Highway 4, from the beach up to around the bend where the historical marker is. I know it's a job for these people, but still, using an excavator seems like it would just be so fun. Well, it is so fun, but yeah, I guess when it's a, a you know, tw a, a daily job for, for many years, the, the fun aspect can probably... Uh, Get sucked out of it. But I hope these guys enjoy what they're doing. I mean, it certainly looks like a hoot. Orbital Pad 1, or is this still Pad A? Buddy, label, <laughs> I don't know. It looked like they were doing some work on the uh, cladding there on the tower. That, that's specifically why I shot that shot. Pad 2, launch mount manifold delivered. Here's another one of those water manifolds we were looking at earlier. Looks like it was delivered to the launch site and uh, lifted off of the truck there. Do we get to see it lifted into place, question mark? Like I said, I've been sick for a couple days, so I've been out of the loop. No, we don't get to see it lifted, but we do get to see this beautiful rosette spoonbill. Gotta love it. All right, I'm filling in for Das, who is at IREC with D this week. Uh, check out the IREC streams. They're a hoot. D and, and Das are doing a whole bunch, and the whole production team as well, to make that happen. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.